Welcome everyone to another Good Vibes Gaming weekly discussion where we put our suggestions for topics to our patrons who then vote on it for a winning topic. And this week, the winning topic is our least favorite games of all time <laughs> are the ones we hate. Which games just drive us up the <laughs> wall? It is time to get mean. <laughs> I know, right? Well, the way you actually worded it in your topic was the worst games we've ever played. Not even just the least favorite, but the absolute that worst. That is true. So yeah, the yeah. worst games, they kind of go hand in hand in my opinion. You know? Yeah, they do. I figure if yeah. you're playing a bad game, you're like, <laughs> I don't like this. I hate this. And this is, yeah. these are really bad. Although some people can appreciate bad games and have some fun with them. And I think that is the case here where obviously they're bad games, but maybe you're a weirdo who, weirdo, not weirdo, but maybe you're somebody who appreciates <laughs> Sonic 06, for example. And it's like, you know, right. it's bad, but I enjoy it. So right, I exactly. guess there's yeah. wiggle room in there. We'll leave it to your own interpretation, but yeah. So yeah, uh, we, I don't think we have any like set number, maybe like three each, but it's one of those things where it all depends on how much ammunition we have to actually talk about each subject. So I'll kick it off. Why not? And uh, get this thing whole, whole thing started and put out a really obvious one. And I'm curious if either of you have played it because... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Paper Mario Sticker Star. Oof. Oh, wow. That's a that's a good one. I played a little bit of that game. Mm. Uh, in a weird, like, roundabout set of circumstances, Nintendo sent me a free copy as, like, a customer service thing. I had a 3DS with a bad hinge, and I sent it in for repair, and they sent it back without fixing it. Oh, God. <laughs> and then uh, when they sent it back the second time, they sent me a copy of Sticker Star with it. And... I put it in the system and started playing it, and I was like, this is just bad customer service all over again. I know, it's like, I that's hate just this sitting game. in your face. That would have been the worst part if they sent the game and not fixed the 3DS. It's like, oh, here you go, here's a turd. By the way, pff, spit in your mouth or something. <laughs> spit in your mouth, wow. That's, that, yikes. I mean, to be fair, though, Sticker Star does kind of, yeah, it, it is tantamount to having someone spit in your mouth, I guess. <laughs> it's 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 bad. I mean, they're straight up, and, and it's a shame, because I remember being really excited for it. Uh, mm. I remember, you know, previewing it at E3. They had, you know, an early build of it at E3, whatever year that was. And, you know, it was Paper Mario on the 3DS, and the 3DS was shiny and new at the time. It was just exciting. Then the game arrived, and it, it just, I mean, it... it did so many things wrong and it's a shame because there are things to like about it visually it's a nice looking game the soundtrack's great not mm -hmm. surprising it's paper mario but god just playing the game the act of playing the game is such a drag it, everything else is just a mess there's no yeah. personality to it like it, it's not even the fact that uh you know there's no partners or anything like that that obviously that's an issue that's just an easy thing to point to and be like this is the issue it's that even the Toads and the Minions and everybody you're talking to has no personality, dude. There's nothing to them. It just feels lifeless, like a by-the-numbers, let's-go adventure. And, you know, the, the, the fact that they don't have Bowser speak once, when he's always one of the biggest nah, highlights from that. previous Paper Mario games, that is... that's a, that's a crime. And then that your partner, Kirsty is probably one of the worst out there who is just so mean-spirited throughout the entire game. She's awful. Yeah. Yeah. It is just... It, it, it comes across as just a really almost mean-spirited game because there is it is so particular with what you have to do. If you don't do exactly what this game wants, you are going to be in a bad... For, for a bad time. I and mean, you're still in for a bad time, but even worse time because now all yeah. of a sudden you got to figure out what exactly does it want. And there's no instruction. There is a famous moment from when I streamed this game, and not the one you're thinking of. It's the moment where I, I could have beaten Bowser on my first try, despite not knowing how exactly it goes, and just sort of powering my way through it or figuring things out and still making it happen. But I needed health. I needed to revive myself, but all my mushrooms were gone. So all I had left to heal was a birthday cake item. One of the, you know, the, the thing items. I don't even know what they call them anymore. <laughs> right. Thing stickers, I think? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. So I used it. And the birthday cake came up, and then it went away. And no health healing happened. Because it turns out, you had to blow into the microphone in order to blow out the candles and actually get the health. There was no instructions for that. 
Yeah. So I wasted the item. And there's just like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, and, and and if I remember correctly, I only I, I did somehow manage to finish the game. I, I would never go back to play it again. But I if I remember correctly, that that whole gauntlet of final battles is brutal in that game. It's really long, mm -hmm. and I feel like I remember it taking a long time to whittle down Bowser's HP. And so having to redo that, at least from what I remember, just sucks. And yeah, like you said. Derek, it's just a mean-spirited game. It, the, the, the game doesn't extend any sort of olive branch in terms of assisting you or pointing you in the right direction at all. And sometimes that's okay if the game around that is well-designed enough to, to justify it. Like, you know, Breath of the Wild, for example, is a game that's built on letting the player roam free and figure out what to do. But there's still at least a nudge in the right direction if you want it. Sticker Star just isn't a game that's designed like that from the ground up, and there's no option to have the game kind of push you in the right direction if you ask for it. And the fact that there is only one way to defeat each boss, literally one way, and if you don't do that, the, the battles are unwinnable, is just, that's just bad game design. Mm -hmm. it, it's just a chore. <laughs> that is the biggest way to put it. It is a chore because there's no direction. There's so many spots where you're basically going to have to look up a guide, or in my case, have a chat basically like going, oh yeah, here's where you go, and this is what you do. Yeah. I'm I'm impressed that you guys stuck with this game. <laughs> I yeah, played I know. maybe two hours of this, and I was like, nope, this ain't it. <laughs> and I, have, I never picked it up again. Yeah. I think I just really wanted... I really want. I wanted to like it because mm. it's pa it's Paper Mario, and I love Paper Mario. And you know, back then, we were coming off of you know that was back when the series was still generally hadn't had a miss. I mean, you could argue the Super Paper Mario was a miss, depending on how you feel about it. I You'd liked be it wrong, enough. Though. Yeah, I yeah, like I, I like Mario, I exactly. like Super Paper Mario, but it was a departure. Yeah. So, like Tra Ash was saying, seeing the trailers where Mario seems to be walking around in a traditional world, and it's like, oh, they're probably just hiding the partners. No. <laughs> yeah. And and that was also the beginning of like the homogenization of all the NPCs where suddenly they're all toads. And it's not like the like the kinds of toads in Origami King where they're actually you know, really well written and there's some diversification between their personalities. These toads just had nothing to make them stand out. And that was I as I recall from various interviews about it, was part of that Miyamoto effect where Miyamoto stepped in and said, No, all these things you loved about the first three Paper Mario games, do none of them, and use only Toads, no original characters, no fun, not no fun, but I I, I don't, I'll, to this day, I'll never, and I, I've kind of talked about this before, I, of course I will always respect Miyamoto, but some of the stuff that he comes in and, and does, and kind of the upending the tea table thing, and some of his development instincts for Paper Mario, I think have been completely the wrong decisions, and I'll never quite understand why he mandated those things. This in Galaxy 2, I think, has led to yep. um, the idea that Miyamoto just hates story. Yeah, Galaxy 2 as well. I, I, I was going to mention that. Yeah. Completely agree. Ugh, yeah. Well, yeah. That's that's definitely <laughs> one of mine, but uh, Steve, what's one of yours? You only, you only had to suffer through two hours of this, so I want to hear more about your suffering. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I'm going to go with the obvious choice first, because I think the other two are games that I've never talked about. The first one is the one I'm probably well known for hating, and that is Little Town Hero. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> uh, that game is... It, and mind you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this outright. This is the best game of the three that I hate. Ooh. <laughs> but oh, okay. um, Little Town Hero is a trash fire of a game. <laughs> it is... I mean... And, and I say this, I, I think part of what makes me hate this game so much is that I was legitimately very excited for this game. Uh, you know, I remember during the GX days, the three of us being on discussions and me and, you know, kind of effusively praising the trailers for this game because it looked like something, it looked like what I wanted to see from both, you know, the Nintendo Switch and from Game Freak at that point in time, like a, a full, a full-fledged RPG with gorgeous graphics uh, that would be you know, something out of the norm. Uh, and it was whew, not <laughs> that. So for those of you that don't know, Little Town Hero, it is like the most low rent game I could ever imagine Nintendo promoting. You know, I, I pointed out a ton of just issues with this game in my review of it back on GX, but like the character whose name is Axe, his name is Axe, <laughs> but <laughs> he, like if you would be running one direction and then like turn, 
they didn't have an animation for that. He would just glide oh, along the floor motionless for a bit until the animation <laughs> kicked in. There was like five NPC models and they were just repeated all over the place, sometimes right next to each other in the same cutscene. Uh, there was, you know, no interiors. Like you live, the town is part of the story and you can't go into hardly any buildings in it. And then there's just, you know, uh, dialogue trails off. There's weird, like random stutters and long pauses when it tries to load things that just like, you'll be, you'll be going into a cutscene and you'll think the game froze. <laughs> and and then it just suddenly pops back to moving again. And that, I, I was like, how did this get through? Like, how did Nintendo and Game Freak let this out? And I, I have to imagine, and I don't necessarily subscribe to this theory, but I have to imagine that they were like, well, you know, we got Pokemon coming out soon. So just get this out the door. Just let it out well, to that's, die. That's the crazy <laughs> yeah. thing is that people were pointing at Little Town here as like, why isn't this animation in Pokemon when it turned out... Say what you will about Sword and Shield, but Sword and Shield is the better game here, uh, quite obviously. It's it one of those things, like, I saw the trailers, so I was like, you know, I'm a little worried about the fact that you only seem to be secluded to one town, but other games have made a, a cozy little place like that and made it enjoyable and, you know, really got you to enjoy a character, the characters around you. And it, well, I, I watched your review and I'm like what the hell happened? <laughs> like, it just, it's <laughs> it like, is. where did this come from? That it's so, like you told me, I was like, there's no way. Like, I, I honestly yeah. did not believe you when you first said, I was like, oh, Steve's exaggerating. <laughs> and then I watched, I was like, oh God. It was, it was terrible. I mean, and, and the funny part is it was so bad. And I, I realized that people probably were going to think I was being hyperbolic in my, in, <laughs> in my hatred for the game. So I made sure I was like, I'm going to record all these visual bugs and stupid, like hiccups and stutters and everything so that I can show them mm -hmm. in the review that I'm not like making this up, you know? Um, uh -huh. And I mean, even if you stripped out all of that and it performed well and, and had more than a handful of NPC models and, you know, if you could go inside the buildings and, and it didn't pause when you were loading cutscenes, the battle system, which is the main thrust of the game, still sucks. <laughs> it's so bad. It is based so much on RNG and luck that there's no, you never feel accomplished when you win a battle in that game. You're like, oh, well, the cards landed in my favor this time. Sweet. <laughs> and it is just an unbearably annoying game to play. Like the battles, I mean, a, a good short battle with a single monster is like 30 minutes long. Oh, God. And it, that it sounds gets awful. Yeah, it just gets to the point where you're so beleaguered by the fighting, which is constant, that you're just like, please, please just end. I, <laughs> I want this battle to end so I can go on to the next four minutes of gameplay before I'm stuck in another hour long fight. And it, it's just, it never feels like anything you do in that game is earned. It feels like you just got lucky and cool, moved on. Like, it, it's almost like a gotcha game that you don't have to pay for. <laughs> and <laughs> it, it's, yeah, it just nice. robs you of any sense of accomplishment. You never feel like your character gets better at anything throughout the course of the game. You're like, oh, I got a new card that might randomly come up. <laughs> Ugh. I, I, there are there are definitely fans of this. I sparred about this game with uh, Neil from Nintendo World Report multiple times, and we both had to just agree to disagree. I was like, "This game is terrible. I'm glad you love it, but it I would not pay the play this again if if you paid me. There's no amount that you could pay me to play through Little Town Hero again." By the time <laughs> I got to the last boss, I remember just sitting on my couch, being like, "Please end so I can write about how bad you are." <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Do you have any experience with it, Ash? Because I don't. I, 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 I don't. know I've not played with it, but yeah, I don't have any experience with it. But my experience with it literally is just having heard Steve talk about how much he absolutely fucking hates <laughs> it <laughs> over the years, and that doesn't exactly inspire a lot of confidence in terms of wanting to play it. So no, I haven't. I probably won't. Uh, no. Just, I mean, yeah, that's <laughs> Steve. I can I can feel the vitriol coming from Steve about this game, and it, 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 sound, it radiates it sounds awful. off me. Yep. It really sounds like it's awful. All right, I'm I'm curious. Does your game, your first game, you want to talk about Ash? Does it radiate radiate off you your hatred? Oh, it does. <laughs> I, I've actually and 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 stop me if you've heard this one before because I have talked about this before in, in discussions. I apologize for not being surprised, but I 
in, in every, in, in the fullest sense of the word that I can say, I hate this game. This game makes me angry. <laughs> and that is the third birthday. Oh, I hate yes. this game <laughs> so much. Gameplay-wise, it isn't the worst game ever. Like, gameplay-wise, it is a perfectly fine game. There are parts of it that are an interesting evolution of, of you know, the Parasite Eve combat system, especially from the first game. Um, there's an, I think it's called the Overdive system, where Aya can, like, dive into NPC soldiers around, like, the battlefield, and then you can in inhabit their body and use that to gain an advantage around the enemies and warp, you know, to and from different NPCs in the battlefield. That's pretty cool. It's a nice enough looking game. The soundtrack's great, but this game, I don't think I've ever seen any other game commit such total character and series assassination over the course of one game. This game utterly just demolishes any integrity the Parasite Eve series and story had for itself, and it just completely murders the character of Aya Brea, who before this was, she was awesome. She was one of the, one of the, you know, earlier badass female, you know, video game protagonists. She was awesome in Parasite Eve 1 and 2, but then, the, I, and I, there, I can't go into everything because of spoilers, but there are seriously icky things that go on later on in the story that, that kind of change your perception of who you've actually been playing as this whole time. Uh, and... When, when that goes hand in hand with the way that Aya is grossly sexualized in this game, and I mean grossly, like, I'm, I'm sure you guys have heard, you know, in battle, mm. if she takes damage, her clothes will come off until she's, you know, literally it's just reduced down to her bra and panties, basically. And she's, you know, she's fighting these tentacle, these tentacled-like creatures, and there's a, there's a definitely an icky overtone of just, like, you know, grossness you know and again she her, her she loses her clothes she takes damage her uh, her voice when she you know when she takes damage she's very she whimpers and moans a lot you know she's there's just a lot of weird sexual overtones to her character in this game that that didn't exist in that way in previous games and it just completely undermines who she is and then I, I like I said when you when you marry that with a certain plot twist later in the game, it gets really problematic, and those of you who've played the game know what I'm talking about, um, so I won't go into it here. Uh, but but even if you take out how much this game completely murders Aya, uh, and I can't take that out because I love that character, the story, at best, is a mess. The story just takes all yeah. these things you thought you knew from the previous games, these characters you've grown to know from previous games, and just completely throws all that shit out the window. Remember that cool, quirky little uh, scientist, uh, Maida, from the first game? You know, he obviously has a crush on Aya, and he, but he's, he's, he's a nice guy and, you know, means well. Well, now he's a creepy, basement-dwelling, seeming psych psychopathic, just like he's creepy around Aya. He's clearly, like, a predator. They've taken all these things about characters that you liked in previous games and just completely ruined them. And the story itself makes very little sense, and it goes places it never should have gone i like i said the game itself technically is fine it's uh -huh. not the worst game i've ever played but as a parasite eve game it just i like i said i've never seen a game any other game commit such total series and character assassination and i was so excited about this game i know derek i know how much you love parasite eve mm -hmm. i was so happy to finally have a parasite eve 3 after so many years and it wasn't Parasite Eve 3 at all. It was some unrecognizable, twisted mutation of a series I once loved, and if this series ever comes back, I hope it completely removes the third birthday from the canon, or just is a full reboot, because the third birthday really is that bad. I don't really see how you can course correct from just everything the third birthday did to ruin <laughs> Aya and the series. Oh, I hate this game, man. Yeah, I, I as you've been talking, I've been, because I've heard the, <laughs> the overall thing before, like the big twist that makes uh -huh. it so skeevy, but it gets even worse yeah. than that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, it's, yep. it's actively worse than just that twist and what they're trying to describe here. It, it's. I'm surprised you're even trying to protect the plot because, my God, this is. Oh, I'm not. It, it, it at best it makes no. It's just a mess. There's nothing about. The well, plot. what I mean, no. What I mean by that is you're not spoiling it. Like, oh, you're trying I got to, you. you know, got you. Put all this out yeah. there, but it, it is one of those things that is. I. I. I, I mean, I can. <laughs> I can put a spoiler alert, and we can just talk about it really quick. I mean, want to do it? 
Yeah, let's pop one in here because I... <laughs> okay, I, we should, I guess we should talk about just how truly awful this is. So, spoiler alert for everybody. If you care at all, jump yeah, ahead. if you care at all, yeah. But, okay, so later on in the game, you, you find out that essentially, uh, because of some overdive shenanigans where Aya and it can inhabit other people's bodies, as I mentioned before, it turns out uh, that a bunch of stuff happened before the beginning of the game that you didn't know about, and really, you've been playing as her little sister, Eve, this whole time, in Aya's body. Basically, Aya and Eve switch places. Oh, and Eve, right. And, and this is the same Eve from Parasite Eve 2, who is a <laughs> little girl, mm -hmm. a little girl inhabiting Aya's grown woman body, but... This is the Aya, whose clothes have been coming off the whole time as she takes damage throughout the game, who's been very sexualized, but you're playing as a little girl, an underage girl, this whole time. Mm -hmm. And it's like, when you when you realize that, you go from, oh wow, Square Enix completely ruined the, the you know, the badassery and integrity of this character I used to love, to, oh wow, Square Enix did all that, and I've been kind of bait and switch, been playing as an underage little sister this whole time. The f the f is that how is that even anywhere close to okay it's it's not even that it, it's yeah you're playing this girl this underage girl who's in a grown woman's body who's getting sexualized that is weird in itself but when you're talking about how they killed steve uh, killed uh aya's character they literally do that <laughs> that's that's why oh, well, eve, that too eve that's why eve is yeah. in her bodies because aya got killed and uh eve possessed her in order to try to protect her and then by the end of the game, uh, apparently there's time travel involved. It's really weird. That, and yeah, there's a post credit scene that suggests that maybe Aya's alive again. But yeah. doesn't it say a lot about the fact that, you know, I go into the spoiler, but the fact that they killed off Aya at the very beginning of the game isn't even the worst part of all this? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I it, hate this, this game is... so much. I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know what they were thinking with this game. This is such a mess, and I... I, I can totally believe the hate. It's 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 a shame to see a uh, game you love just get utterly destroyed by a bad sequel because <laughs> this is Ugh, mutilated. Yeah, oof. Just ah, uh, I, I I just hope that Parasite Eve does return one day, but I, I really do think it would need to be either a remake or a reboot because I just don't see how you can possibly course correct from that. Yeah. So there's my third birthday hate rant. Yeah, that's that's deserved. Spoilers over, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I guess it's my turn uh, again, and I'm gonna go for another one that I've talked about in the past, and just to just to keep the skeevy feelings going, because uh -oh. Uh, oh boy, uh, have either of you two played Kane and Lynch two? No, I have, but I have no of it. I know all about. Uh, yeah, like yeah. I know the idea is like basically a, almost a grindhouse type thing or like it, it's supposed to be kind of gross and uh, you know the characters aren't likable but it was one of the earliest things I did or making a review when I was still like renting things on Gamefly I remember the first Ken Lynch got a lot of notoriety so I'm like yeah maybe the second one will you know be worth t talking about I got a sequel so I just jump into the sequel and see how that goes so I rented it from Gamefly and did the co-op mode with a friend and I, I kid you not it's like uh, my friend was just like can we stop playing? <laughs> Can we stop? Because it is so, it is so bad. It is just the ugliest graphics, the worst yeah. filter you can think of, the most unlikable characters you can imagine. Like they are just the worst. You don't root for them. You're actively almost rooting against them, and they, you know, they they get they go through some crap. I think I'm pretty sure there's a point where you're fighting through the middle of Chinatown while butt naked. And you have the sensor thing in front of you, or maybe they don't. I can't even remember. Maybe for the front. And it's just... It's just... I don't even know how to put it. It's... Uh, <laughs> it's one of just the most heinous things I've ever played in my life. And I, I've spoken about it before. It just is the worst thing. But it just... I can't... I can't think of a single thing in that game that was w worth anything. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, uh, gross. Pretty much the entire time. Like, I, I would like as you were talking about um, third birthday. I was thinking like, oh, it's like a bad like Cinemax s sequel or something like that. It's just like all uh. you know, play to the the low brows. Like, oh, oh sweet, look at the, the you know, we can at least we can check out some skin or something like that. This is just like, no, I'm a, 
I don't even know how to put this. This is just a uh, gross theater in the middle of gross part of town. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I've heard there's just a lot of just ugliness in that game, like both literally and figuratively. There's, it's just a lot of just grossness that doesn't really have any payoff or have any justification. No, it really doesn't. It's just bad people doing bad things to other bad people, and then it ends. <laughs> and then it ends. I, that does sound terrible. I, I've heard a lot about the game, uh, but I, I fortunately have never played it, and I never intend to. Which is so weird, because it's from the developers of Hitman. Right. Yeah. That That is the thing I find probably most puzzling about this, is that we know these folks can make great games, <laughs> but... I, I, I wonder about that. I'm uh, When I heard about all the stuff with, uh, was it GameSpot, I believe, and Kanan Lynch, I just kind of wrote that franchise off entirely. Mm-hmm. And like Ash, I kind of just never had plans to play it after that. And I'm glad to hear, apparently, that I made the right choice. It sounds to me like you did. Oh, oh, here we go. I'm, I just, just to remind myself of some of the stuff that happens in here, like just a, like how bad it got, like... They have uh, the, the the naked section. Basically, when you're captured, you I think, and then that character named Zhu, which I believe is a female character. I'm, I'm trying to find like the gender. Yes, they're working with this girl, girl named Zhu, X I U, uh, and they f- eventually get captured and are tortured uh, in a bath in a bathroom. When Lynch is believed dead, he gets dumped in an all- alleyway and regains consciousness. He kills the guy torturing them and saves his you know Kane, but finds out that. Zoo has been both raped and skinned alive. Oh, okay. Wow. And then you know. they are both naked and and you know last, after dealing with lacerated with box cutters, they're fighting through the city while naked and just going through all this stuff. It's like again, it is the grossest things that you can imagine just going through at all points, and it's just never, not it's just never good. It's it, it's like oh all uh, all all good in this world is now dead. That's 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 wonderful. Jeez, I, I I did not know about that. That's yeah. that's awful. It it seems like there's really no. It's just a lot of misery in this game for yeah. for misery's sake. Pretty much, I I can't even think of it. It's um yeah, it's there's no good. I'm like scanning. Like, is there anything good? No, there's not. It is just yeah. bad. Jeez, man. Yeah. Well, I that's that's certainly a game I will never ever go out of my way to play. No, don't. Yeah. <laughs> Stay away. Ugh. Steve, <laughs> save us. Man, I'm, <laughs> I'm about to... Uh, so I've never talked about this game publicly before, technically. So, as you all know, I used to work at Nintendo Life, and I started off my, my career on the bottom rung of the Nintendo Life ladder just doing reviews of the games no one else wanted to review. And among those, the lowest rating I ever gave out was for Joe's Diner. For the Wii U. (laughs) This game, you guys, is not not just one of the worst games I've ever reviewed, just one of the worst games I've ever played in my entire life. Um, So if you're not familiar with Joe's Diner, and this came back up to the front of my mind because it came out this year for the Switch. I know. And that is impressive because it takes a lot of gall to re-release a game this bad. Um so Joe's Diner is kind of like a like a bargain bin Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, you work in the titular diner and you work the night shift inexplicably, like from from midnight to six a.m. or something. And it's this diner that's just on this empty stretch of highway. Uh, it's supposed to be creepy. It's for whatever reason built atop a uh, Indian burial ground <laughs> because that's a thing that people do in spooky uh, games. And I went into this <laughs> thinking like, oh man, I'm not good with scary games, but this is what I've been assigned. I'll just fulfill the assignment. This game ain't scary. It, not even remotely close uh-huh. to scary. So what it amounts to is there's 30 different shifts you have to play through. And I've played all 30 of these terrible, <laughs> terrible oh, levels. Um But you're always in the diner, you never leave, and spooky, quote-unquote, I'm using big, big f***ing air quotes on this, (laughs) spooky things happen, like the jukebox turns on, or a plate makes a noise. (laughs) Um, And to prevent the spirit of the most Caucasian-looking Indian chief in the history of Indian chiefs uh, (laughs) coming out to kill you, you have to clean up the diner and stop the jukebox sometimes. Like, it is... 
just the I want worst, this like, diner it, running efficiently, and that's what I want in my afterlife. That's basically what it sounds yeah. like. He's like, if oh, you're going to build a diner on my burial ground, it better be the best functioning diner on Earth with no customers. <laughs> like, it is ridiculous. And, and uh, to make matters worse, this game runs like trash. I mean, it is on the Wii U, it was running at like... I mean, it, it just would hitch and stutter. And I'm not talking like micro stutter. It, worse than Little Town Hero. Like, this game would take pauses to load rooms, which made <laughs> zero sense. It made no use of the gamepad whatsoever. Well, it, like, regardless of if you were playing on TV or, or you know, mirror mode, it would just mirror the gameplay, which seems like an odd choice if the game can't run stably at all. And then, like, the, if I remember correctly, because it's been six, seven years since I reviewed this game... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, only five years, God. I wish it was further, further, <laughs> you know, away from me, but, um, it, like, you would, you would vaguely see or hear the, this Native American chief. Like, it, it was never, you know, it's not like he would walk up to you and kill you, like, like a Resident Evil villain or anything. You would just see him and then suddenly, like, they'd make a half ass attempt at a jump scare and, Oh, you game over. <laughs> it was just <laughs> this game felt like uh this game looks like a PC game from the early like like mid 90s. Yeah, the graphics are terrible. And I'm it was not even, even low like... in there. <laughs> cuz I don't know if you'll be happy to know, but I looked this up cuz I've never heard of this game before and I looked it up. Your review is the first thing that comes up. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Honestly, please go read my review. If you've never played this game, if you see it on the eShop where it is being sold for a staggering $20, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> please read my Nintendo Life review because uh, I think I did a good job explaining why you should stay far, far, far away from this game. The only thing scary about it is the fact that it costs money. Um, <laughs> like, I, yeah. I've never played... I mean, and I played Meme Run and other like legendarily terrible Wii U games. But I think there's there's the difference between a game that is potentially trying to be terrible and a game that is clearly not trying to be bad, but just is. And and Joe's Diner is definitely in the latter category. Just run the Jeez. hell away from this. I, I I almost like I thought about it and I was like, man, I should pick this up on Switch just to see if it improved. And I'm like, nope. That's a trap. <laughs> That's not a thing I'm going to do to myself. I, I should it love myself awful. more than that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you look up the Wii U, or, or I'm sorry, the Switch eShop art for this game, uh -huh. uh, just, like, look at how Caucasian the Native American chief looks That's in the key terrible. art for this game. Oof. Oh, I'm like, geez. you couldn't even get, like, a model. And, and I'm looking at Switch screenshots, and I'm like, this looks just as bad as it did on the Wii U. <laughs> like, they didn't improve anything. They might, like... Nothing at all has changed. So, yeah, this probably is just this a is, port. Yeah, it probably is, and I'm just shocked that they would put in the effort. But I don't know, man. Someone, mm. yeah, someone is uh is still there. Keep it. I love I love the features listed. By the way, uh, keep things calm to not incur the angry chieftain's wrath. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! All right, all right. innovative sure. gameplay is just an out and out lie. Yeah. But yeah, it 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 turns out like it's less uh and, and I. I said this in the review. I had to reread my review in preparation for this, but it's trying to be like a Five Nights at Freddy's, but it honestly just turns out to be like a time management sim where you're where you're cleaning up a diner, you know. And, and <laughs> but it's uh, spooky. Yeah, it's spooky yeah. because if you don't keep it clean, <laughs> angry angry chieftain's gonna show up. And it's like you can only carry one thing. Like there's plates everywhere for some reason. You you start your shift and nobody has bust a table in a month. It looks like. And you can carry, like, one plate at a time. You're the most inept <laughs> diner employee in the world. Like, you're like, oh, got to do these. I've never seen a person carry just a single plate from a table away at a restaurant. It's right. like you're a six-year-old that's being told by their parents <laughs> what to do. But, yeah, it's uh, stay, stay far away. This is terrible. I don't have a ton to say about it because it's just... It, it's a legendarily bad game. If you want to torture yourself, then this is probably a good game to punish yourself with. But... If, if you love yourself, maybe just pretend I never talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ash. Well, what all right. <laughs> so, so I'm going to cheat with this one. I'm going to split this between two games, and neither of these will surprise anybody who's been following our content for any length of time. But I know I would get taken to task, and rightly so, 
as a Mega Man fan if I did not mention <laughs> these games as among the worst I've ever played. And so, like I said, I'm going to cheat because I, I honestly, it depends on, on the day of the week, I really cannot decide which game is more abysmal, Mega Man X6 or X7. Oof. They're both awful. They're both really, truly terrible, bad games. And, uh, you know, never let it be said that I won't, uh, you know, criticize one of my favorite series of all time. Obviously, I love Mega Man, but these games are garbage. And X6, on the face of it, X6 might be the better one because at least it's still a 2D game. And it's using, you know, the same, generally the same engine and mechanics that they had in place since X4, which is an amazing game. No voice acting. Um, but, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, and voice acting, exactly. But X6 just, they, they kind of jettison good level design or even any level design at all really in favor of just let's just fill the screen with enemies and call that difficulty you you are there are literally rooms in this game where you the the, the screen is so full of enemies especially the nightmare viruses which will cl uh, slowly home in on you by the way um that you just can't do anything other than tank damage and just push on through and there are even stages in the game, the uh, the first of the last uh, set of stages, the gate fortress stages, there's, a, there's an area that you literally cannot pass through depending on who you're playing as. So if you're playing as Unarmored X, there are pits that you cannot get through in this game. And you have to either play, be playing as one of X's armored forms that have you know, either air dashing or flying, or as Zero, who has double jumping. Um, and this can also be affected by the reploids you save throughout the game. So depending on uh, the Reploids you save, which they have uh, random power-ups that you know they, they give you when you save them, if you fail to save them, if the Nightmare Viruses get to them before you do, you're locked out of that power-up for the rest of the game, for the rest of that save file. So you either have to restart or just push on through with a character you might not want to play as. And upgrade your character specifics. So let's say uh, you know, you've been focusing on one specific character, if you don't have the right upgrade, you can't, literally cannot get through certain stages as certain characters. And it's just, it, it's almost as though they didn't even think about the level design. And to be fair, X6 did come out like barely a year after X5. It was obviously a cash grab. Uh, they were just trying to cash in on what they saw as the success of X5. Mm -hmm. It's well known now that uh, KG Inafune meant, X, meant for the series to end at X5. There wasn't even supposed to be any more games after five. And X6 and 7 make a really good case for why there shouldn't have been. X7, for its, for its part, is just a... I, I, I would say it's less broken than X6 in the sense that it is at least a, you know, a completable game, uh, regardless of what you do. But whether you want to complete it is a whole nother story. And it's just, it's, it's a miserable slog from start to finish. The 2D segments of the game are okay at best, but most of the game is 3D, and this this is not how to translate Mega Man X's movement and mechanics into 3D. The the physics are clunky. The level design is uninspired. Uh, it, it's an ugly game in general. Uh, it, it looks a little bit better with the the recent uh, the Mega Man X Legacy Collection. They definitely gave it a nice little bit of polish, but it still doesn't look great. Uh, the soundtrack is completely, mostly unmemorable, which for a Mega Man game is a cardinal sin. And for a game called Mega Man X7, you can't even play as the title character for half the game, depending on what you do. And <laughs> Don't you need to save a certain number of people or like Yeah, you have to, there are, I think there are 128 Reploids to save, and X doesn't become playable until you have saved 64 of them. And by that point, uh, from, a, from every review I've watched, by that point, uh, Zero and Axel are way more powerful. Yeah, again, upgrades are character-specific. So if you want to play as a fully-powered X, you have to go in knowing what you're doing and essentially go out of your way to save Reploids without completing stages, or, or, compl or at least without getting upgrades and completing as few stages as possible. And... On one hand, I commend the courage that you know, like the, the the balls they had to do this, because narratively it makes sense, as we know. X is a pacifist. He's finally had enough after six games. He's like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm done. I'm retiring <laughs> from the front lines. I'm gonna find more diplomatic situ uh, solutions to all the continued fighting and wars. So I I appreciate that they tried to put you know their money where their mouth was, where X's character is concerned, but. I don't think this was the way to do it, and it doesn't help that X himself 
he doesn't come off in this game as being a pacifist in, in a noble sense. He comes off as being a pacifist in a whiny sense. Mm -hmm. And I say that as someone we who's, you know, he's my fight. favorite character ever. Yeah, he's awful in this game. He's so whiny. <laughs> Literally, his voice clip when he, uh, or one of his voice clips when he uh, releases a charge shot is, Stop it! What? Like, what were they thinking with this game? And the story is nothing to write home about. Axel, unfortunately, uh, and, you know, he could have been a really cool new character debut, but he wouldn't get cool, <clears throat> excuse me, until X8. So if you only play X7, you're left wondering, why the hell did they even introduce this character? He's obnoxious. He's he's unlikable. What's even the point? <clears throat> he's a poor stand-in for X. And, yeah, so it, I don't know which game is actually worse. Uh, I would say mechanically X6 is worse because, again, it literally... There is no level... One of the... Oh, God. One of the stages in X6, Blaze Heatnix's stage, it is literally... The uh, like four fights against the same mini boss, the same oh. shitty mini boss that has four tiny hitboxes, and and you fight this thing I think three or four times in different uh, room designs, and then you fight the boss, and that's it. That's the whole stage. F from the sounds of it, it's like X six is actively bad, and X seven is boringly bad. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. would say that, and and they're both incredibly frustrating games to play. Um, and it's just, yeah, it really depends on your personal sensibilities and the day of the week and your horoscope, which <laughs> games worse, but, but they're both truly, truly awful. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's a shame because, you know, the first half of the X series is, it's amazing, especially one and four. So it's a shame that it had to happen that way. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go ahead and rapid fire our last picks because, uh, I, I honestly don't have too much to say about my, I'm going to throw these in together because functionally they're kind of similar. Uh, in that they're retro games and there's not a lot to say about them. Um, because my other one that I would pick is Castlevania The Adventure on Game Boy, Ooh. which is by far the worst mm -hmm. in that, that game in that series. Simon's Quest is a freaking you know, classic compared to that thing. And the other one that I've never talked about that I've played thanks to the, the Sonic's Ultimate Genesis collection, and I'm like, why Why does this keep getting ported? Why is this such a, considered such a... I don't even know if it's considered a classic, but it keeps getting ported, so somebody likes it. Why the hell do people like Altered Beast? <laughs> oh, Altered. <laughs> Rise from your grave. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, whoa, well, you said that way wrong. It's Wise from your grave. <laughs> Wise <laughs> from your grave, right. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I played through Altered Beast, and there's not a lot to say, because you can beat that thing in like 30 minutes, and it's literally the one of the weakest, worst beat-em-ups I've ever seen in my life, where you're literally just walk right, punch, walk right, punch, walk right, punch. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry kick like eh, 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 until yeah. you finally get your upgrades and you become your monster form and then it's just like oh i got some range now all right beat this thing all right move on to the next one there was nothing to it it is so freaking basic now granted this is based on an arcade game and i've never played the arcade one but i can't imagine it being much better the genesis version absolutely sucks and like why do they keep porting this piece of crap it is awful yeah. I, basically, I think the only reason that Altered Beast shows up in so many of these is because it was the original Sega Genesis pack-in game. Oh. And so, like, if oh. you bought a Genesis at launch, you got Altered Beast with it, right? Oh, and that is not Altered how you sell Beast, a system. <laughs> yeah, no, it no. really isn't. But I, as someone who did get, like, a Model 1 Genesis when it came out, um, I, I will say that going from, like, you know, 8-bit... To, to that, I was like, whoa, these graphics are amazing. Like, it, it served the purpose, at least, of being, like, a technical showcase at the mm -hmm. time. Uh, but it definitely hasn't aged well at all. The gameplay was never anything to write home about. But when you're, like, seven, you're like, oh, man, I turned into a werewolf. That's so cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I would say that that is probably it. I guarantee you that it comes down to someone looking at sales numbers and they're like, oh, we sold so many copies and no one like raises their hand in that meeting and goes, uh, like 98% of those are from console sales. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's, it's pack in, pack in dude. It's let it go. But yeah. And, and to, uh, answer your question about the arcade version, it's nearly identical. The oh, only thing no. that's different is that the animations and graphics are better, but it's it, like Ooh. gameplay wise. It's a one-for-one one recreation. Oh, God. Let that franchise... I mean, it's dead, but just bury it. <laughs> it <laughs> felt so worthless <laughs> to me. Oh, yeah. God. 
But yeah, the, the Alter Beast just for my little swerve there. But as far as Castlevania Adventure, I've spoken about this one before. I'm not going to hammer into it too much, uh, too much just so we don't go too long. Basically, it is slow and it is punishing. It's only four levels long, but you will take ages to beat this thing. It, it, it kind of... Uh, the thing is, it's a slow descent as well, because you don't you think, oh, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's on Game Boy, and yeah, it's missing some features from classic Castlevania, like there's no sub-weapons or anything like that, but hey, it has this cool, like, upgrade the whip thing uh, that, that you can do. We can actually shoot fireballs, so you actually have some range to it. That, that's neat. Oh, I take damage at all, and it downgrades one level. Well, that's un that's inconvenient. And then you get to the uh, second level, and it's like, oh god, everything's coming from me from every direction. I can't not get hit, so I guess I'm just going to be using the, the least powerful whip the entire time, and I can manage it, and uh, make that work. And then you get to the third level, and this is where it broke me, <laughs> because it is, I want you to imagine, the slowest walk speed possible. Like, you want to take the Belmont strut and cut it, like, make it a quarter as fast. Oh, and God. It just oh. agonizingly slow. And it is a platforming sequence where you go to the right. Well, actually, not even platforming sequence. It's a sequence where you go right, fighting enemies, while spikes lower from the ground. Or f f lower from the from the ceiling. And you got to make it up, make it in time. Um, and then uh, <laughs> you get to... Um, oh, maybe it's coming from the left. I forget. Spikes are coming from a direction. Either left or from the uh -huh. top. And you got to make it in a certain amount of time. I think from the top. Then you get to the second section of this level, where you uh, all of a sudden it becomes a vertical shaft, and it, uh, spikes are rising from the bottom. So you have to constantly climb on ropes, defeat enemies, get higher, and not try to die <laughs> as this comes from the bottom with really wonky platforming. And then you finally get to the top of that sequence, and it's time to go back left, where then all of a sudden you have um, this spike wall coming from the right and you're going and they have these basically s and z shapes where you got to go back and forth and defeat enemies and try to get past them Ugh. as quick as possible and it is a slog it is a merciless slog where you just you have to, it becomes motion uh, muscle memory you have to be through muscle memory or thank god i was playing this on the 3ds uh, uh eShop where there is uh, suspended features and make save make, make oh, yeah. save, save points because god i would not have been that game otherwise it is a miserable it experience terrible. and fourth mm -hmm. level isn't much better but that third level will always stick out to me as probably the worst platforming section i've ever played in my life that sounds off and, and i've heard you talk about this before um I, it, it sounds like it's pretty irredeemable, especially for, you know, it's it's Castlevania, man. You, you you go to Castlevania, you expect a certain pedigree. And when that pedigree isn't lived up to, it's it's really a shame. Yeah. It sounds like not to only is it not fair, lived up to, To be fair, this was like just... the fifth or sixth game in the series. And sure, Castlevania yeah, 3 fair. wasn't even out yet. So, like, this was a this was a Game Boy launch title done by a different mm -hmm. developer um, than the original. So, but oof. Mm -hmm. Oof. That said... Uh, just to put it out there, Castlevania 2 on Game Boy, which is part of... Both of these games are part of the, the, the Castlevania uh, Anniversary Collection. Castlevania 2 Game Boy, that is a hidden gem. That is, that is a... That's a damn good game. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it fixes a lot of problems. Gotcha. But yeah. Those are my Oof. two quick ones of like, what the hell, old school games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, how, are we, how you All feeling? Right. What's your last? So my last one is kind of a cautionary tale about <laughs> what happens when a publisher screws with a developer too much. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and, and that game is Crackdown 3, which, oh, no. if, if you're familiar, was developed by the talented folks at Sum Sumo Digital. Uh, but Microsoft was definitely trying to make this, like, a flagship title for the Xbox One, uh, talking about how it's going to use, like, cloud rendering to uh to let you destroy any building in the city and all these other pie in the sky promises about how the game was going to perform and look and run and what we ended up getting was like a terribly generic open world shooter with terry cruz in it <laughs> and <laughs> i i cannot overstate my disappointment in this game so uh i played crackdown one and it was kind of nothing special but crackdown two is probably one of my favorite games of the uh, 360 generation. I just absolutely mm -hmm. loved it. It, you know, it kind of uh, 
was was a story about super powered police and and how uh, they you know you think you're doing the right thing as as a member of this super powered police force and it turns turns out you know that you are as as police have been proven to be over the years kind of a shitty person <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, you know I won't go into too many details but but it turns out that you're essentially the bad guys. Um, and Crackdown 3 promised to expand on that premise and, and, you know, going into a game where you kind of already know that you're not on the right side of things and you're suppressing dissidents and stuff like that. Uh, it seemed like a really interesting story, but the gameplay just absolutely is not there. It is a horrible, like, awful game to play. Um, you know, it, it feels like you're playing, honestly, kind of like a generic mobile game uh, with millions of dollars behind it um and, and so i i ended up bailing out of this game probably within about three hours of starting it because terry cruz was constantly like voice clips from terry cruz were just being yelled <laughs> into my ear constantly. and Jeez. and i'm you know there's there, it's kind of directionless and the graphics uh they were they were clearly going for like a comic book type of look to it but the environment and the characters kind of clashed with each other. It felt like they just took a model and dropped it into the world, it, into a completely differently designed world. It's, it, it is easy to see the seams <laughs> when you, the minute you start this game. Um, and then they kind of bolted on the, the destruction stuff they'd been talking about in a multiplayer mode that didn't work very well and ran really slow. And uh, it's, it's just a complete mess on a technical level. Um, and, and the worst part is that I think that Sumo Digital could have done justice to this game. Uh, we've clearly seen them deliver on multiple other games in the past, but I think Microsoft just kind of kept trying to tell them how to make the game. And, you know, they're the ones si signing the checks, so I'm sure that, you know, design ideas shifted over time and Sumo ended up getting in too deep with this, but this game is just unplayably bad. Uh, you know, like the inclusion, Terry Crews does nothing to elevate the game. The visuals are, are kind of all over the place. They're, they're a mess and, you know, it doesn't perform nearly as well as it should, probably due to the fact that the core design of the game had to be changed halfway through um, to remove this cloud rendering stuff Microsoft was on about at the time. And uh, if you take all that away, the gunplay is uninspired. The superpowers don't feel half as good as they did before and, and just... It, it, it's bland and lifeless. It is some a world that you just don't want to spend time in, even if you're a fan of the series like I am. It just, uh, I, I walked away from it and never looked back. And I'm, I'm looking Jeez. at the page right now, and I'm looking at screenshots, and I'm just like, yep, this looks terrible. <laughs> I, I'm glad that I never went back and finished this. Uh, yeah. I, I wish this was a game where it turned around, but I'm glad at least that Sumo Digital uh, has gone on to do much better things. That's good. Yeah, I, I've heard really disappointing things about Crackdown 3 across the board, especially in light of how long it took to, to come out. Uh, you know, people were, people love Crackdown 1 and 2 in general, and then 3 had a you know notoriously protracted development time, and then once it finally arrived. I didn't play it, but I heard exactly you know what you've just said, Steve. I've pretty much heard across the board about this game. Mm -hmm. Well, let's yeah. go ahead, and I, I don't want to cut us off, but we are running a little low on time because I know we have some other things to get sure. done. Uh, Ash finishes off here. What is your uh, other hated game? All right, so I was originally going to mention uh, we have to have, you know, Sonic, right? Of course, but not Sonic 06. Sonic 06 we can talk about forever. It has things you can like about it, you know, laugh at about it, but this other one, Sonic 4. This is just oh. a, 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 a this is a an example of a game where I'm like, I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. And as we, as anyone who's had their mom or dad tell them that, or their their spouse tell them that that's way worse than being mad <laughs> being disappointed and it's just it's just disappointing across the board the physics are off the the episode one especially the visuals are are really unattractive the music is terrible mostly which is ridiculous for a sonic game the level designs are all mostly recycled but that's the expected one so i actually wanted to highlight because the ones i've done so far are pretty much expected people who followed me know the games i hate but this one is a swerve. I haven't talked about this before, and this is a PC game I actually played as a kid. Oh my god. Uh, Mac game, actually, as a kid. Hellcat. Steve, maybe you've heard of this, because I know you're more of a PC gamer than, than I am, to a degree, but this was a really weird game. It was a point-and-click uh, adventure game for the Mac and PC, I'm sure. 
uh, that came out sometime in the 90s, and it was just one of those early multimedia CD-ROM games, right? And basically, uh, it's a point-and-click adventure game where you get in, and you get into a cab, and it turns out the cabbie is Satan himself, or a minion thereof, and he tells you, you have to come uh, travel to, through time with me and put your life in danger to save your soul, and it's... So you just go to these, you know, really, really ham-fisted... <laughs> It's really bad. These really ham-fisted representations of, like, uh, ancient Rome and the Jurassic era. And basically, it's one of those things where you have to click on the screen to get anywhere. But there are also obstacles that can kill you. But there's really no good way for you to know where your character is in relation to the obstacles you're trying to click past. So, for example, in the ancient Rome period, there's a gauntlet that you have to get through. But, like, with guillotines and swinging blades and shit, but you have no idea where they are in relation to your character, because you're literally going from static screen to static screen. And so you just end up clicking all over the place and usually dying anyway. And I remember as a kid hating this game, because I was never able to finish it. I'd be curious to go back to it today and see what I think, but I remember it just being dull across the board, <clears throat> almost unplayably bad in terms of actually trying to finish it and get reliably good at the game. And, um, you know, I mean, this tells you, this tagline from the game, I think it's narrated in the intro, tells you everything. You've missed your connecting flight and you have some time to kill, so why not hop in a cab and go take in the sights? There's only one problem. You've just gotten into the wrong cab. <laughs> and it's just so corny. I have never heard of this, Ash, but I'm trying to look up a game called Hellcat, and I keep getting, like, plane fighting games or car games. I, I can't find this game to exist at all. It's weird. It's so weird. It's, it's very obscure. If you put in I Hellcat found it. PC game, you found it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I've never played Hellcab specifically. Oh, but Cab. I was putting Cat. As, <laughs> I did that at first, too. I thought he said oh, Hellcat. Oh, Hellcab. But I, That's funny. I, once oh, he started talking about taxis, I was like, oh, he must have said Cab. But I looked it up, and I the one thing I will say is that this was like uh, the genre du jour of the mid, like early to mid '90s for it PC was. games, um, and yeah. I played a lot of games that are very similar in nature to this, and they're all like universally terrible. Uh, yeah, but the, there's the some one good that... ones like the Seventh Guest, for example. Good game. Like, yeah, there are some good games in in that genre, but ooh, so many bad. <laughs> the the one that I played uh, that was very similar in nature. I played two, uh, Lost Eden which was another early 90s PC game. Uh, I think it was 1995. And I played um, Phantasmagoria, which is a lot closer to oh, Hellcab yeah. in terms of, like, you know, you click in the wrong place and, like, your character gets their head cut off. Yeah, terrible games. Terrible games. But it, it was almost yeah. like a whole genre that was just booming in the in the 90s. Like, rife with terrible art and, and obtuse uh -huh. game design choices. And really uh, bad acting. But there's yeah, li terrible but live action acting. acting. That full motion video blows you away. Yeah. And, of course, the license plate on the Hellcab is XXX666. Of course. Because, of course, it is. You know? Yeah. So this it's just a corny, bad, almost unplayably difficult game that doesn't really... It just feels random, and, and I just remember hating this game as a kid. And uh, going back to it, you know, and, and seeing it now and, and just remembering it, I, I, it's all coming back to me. And, yeah, bad game. Bad, bad game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. Well, I think that about covers it for our <laughs> weekly discussion, this time on our most hated games. But, whew, we got some doozies. <laughs> but thank you for watching. Yep. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider uh, supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash gbgaming. But even just subscribing to the channel and ringing that bell helps us a ton. But until next week's discussion, bye.